Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to discuss you recently introduced regional anesthesia techniques, which are found to be beneficial for the management of perioperative pain during back surgery. A multimodal analgesia technique with the use of regional anesthesia is found to be effective in managing perioperative pain after various surgeries. The expanded use of regional anesthesia techniques is also advocated by ERAS protocols aimed at minimizing opioid analgesics whenever possible. After the introduction of ultrasonographic technology, many regional blocks have been developed to improve the management of perioperative pain. Recently, a variety of interfacial pain blocks have been introduced for providing perioperative analgesia during spine surgery. The most commonly used are erector spiny block, thoracolumbar interfacial pain blocks, and the quadratus lumborum block. All these blocks require a large volume of local anesthetic to be injected in the facial plane of the back muscles. Therefore, it is important to discuss the anatomy of back muscles before going to these blocks. The back muscles are broadly divided into two groups, the extrinsic group of muscles and the intrinsic group of muscles. These both groups are separated by the thoracolumbar fascia. The extensive block muscles consists of trapezius muscle, levator scapulae muscle, rhomboid minor and major muscles, serratus posterior muscles, and the latissimus dorsi muscle. The erector spiny muscle lies just deep to the thoracolumbar fascia. The erector spiny muscle composed of three muscular columns, which lies both sides of the vertebral column. The spinalis muscle attached between the spinous process of the vertebra, while the longissimus muscle attached between the transverse process of the vertebra. The iliocostalis muscle is spanned between the angles of the ribs and the transverse processes. Just beneath the erector spiny muscle, there lies another important group of muscles, which is known as transversal spinalis muscles. This also consists of three major subgroups of muscles, the semispinalis, multifidus, and the rotators. All these muscles originate from the transverse process of the vertebra and attach in the spinous process. The quadratus lumborum muscle is another important muscle of the back. It originates from the posterior one-third of the iliac crest and inserts at the T12 rib and the transverse processes of L1 to L4 vertebra. It is surrounded by the thoracolumbar fascia. The source muscle lies medial, medially and the erector spiny muscle lies posterior laterally to the quadratus lumborum muscles. The lumbar spinal nerve roots run between the quadratus lumborum and the source muscle. The thoracolumbar fascia is a sheet of fused aponeuroses and fascial layers that encases the back muscles. It also affects the spread of local anesthetic. The thoracolumbar fascia can be divided into three layers. The anterior layer lies anterior to the quadratus lumborum muscle and bands medially with the source major muscle, while laterally it continues as a transversal fascia. The medial layer located between the erector spiny and quadratus lumbar spiny block can be performed by depositing local anesthetic between the deep fascia of the posterior layer and closes the erector spiny muscle. The erector spiny block can be performed by depositing with the source major muscle, while laterally it continues processes of L1 to L4 vertebra. It is surrounded by the thoracolumbar fascia. The source muscle lies medial, medially and the erector spiny muscle lies posterior laterally to the quadratus lumborum muscles. The lumbar spinal nerve roots run between the quadratus lumborum and the source muscle. 
the thoracolumbar fascia is a sheet of fused aponeuroses <coughs> and fascia layers that enhances the back muscles. <coughs> it also affects the spread of local anesthetic. The thoracolumbar fascia can be divided into three layers. The anterior layer lies anterior to the quadratus lumborum plan muscle and bands medially with the sauce major muscle, while laterally it continues as a transversal fascia. The medial layer located between the erector spiny and quadratus lumborum muscle, while the posterior layer encloses the erector spiny muscle. The erector spiny block can be performed by depositing local anesthetic between the deep fascia of erector spiny muscle and the transverse process. The local anesthetic deposited here spreads into the ventral and dorsal rami of the spinal nerves. Erector spiny block provides somatic analgesia in a wide area of three to four segments above and below the level of the block. It also prevents visceral autonomic pain and provides good postoperative analgesia. Erector spiny block can be performed in prone, sitting, or lateral positions. The level of the block depends upon the surgical indication. It can be performed by using the high frequency linear probe especially for the thoracic region and low frequency curval linear probe for the lumbar region. The probe is placed longitudinally in the parasagittal plane approximately 3 cm lateral to the midline and here we can recognize the ribs and the glistening pleura. After that, the probe is moved medially to identify the transverse processes. Transverse processes can be identified by the blunt tip. Uh, in the thoracic region, the erector spiny muscle lies deep to the trapezius and rhomboid muscles, and the needle should be inserted and the local anesthetic should be injected between the transverse process and the erector spiny muscles. In lumbar region, the erector spiny muscle lies below the latissimus dorsi muscles. Uh, here, the erector spiny muscle is quite thicker and therefore it is better to insert the needle till it touches the edge of the transverse process and then withdraw the needle for one to two millimeter to inject the local anesthetic. The thoracolumbar interfacial plane block targets the dorsal rami of thoracolumbar nerves as they pass through the paraspinal musculature. The tele block is first defined by the head et al. in 2015. However, after that, there are increasing reports about the efficacy of the block in perioperative pain management. It can be administered by classic technique or the modified technique. In classic technique, local anesthetic is injected between the multifidus and the longismus muscle by positioning the block needle at 30 degree angle from the skin and then advancing from lateral to medial side. In modified technique, the local anesthetic is injected between the longismus muscle and the intercostalis muscle and the needle is advanced from medial to lateral side. For performing the tail block, the probe is placed in transverse orientation in the midline position. Uh, to identify the spinous process and the interspinal muscles and then move laterally to identify the multifidus and longismus muscles. The local anesthetic is deposited between these two muscles and the, which spread proximally to the main stem of the dorsal spine, dorsal ramus.
Vajayajas Lamburam Law was first described by Blanco in 2007 as an extended approach to the TAB block. It is an important block for the lumbar spine surgery. However, it has been widely used for the abdominal and hip surgeries. The spread of local anesthetic depends upon the site of the injection. Four approaches have been defined by various authors. In lateral block, the drug is injected lateral to the quadratus lumborum muscle, just deep to the transversus abdominis aponeurosis. While in posterior block, the injection is given posterior to the quadratus lumborum muscle. In anterior block, the local anesthetic is injected anteriorly between the sos major and the quadratus lumborum muscle. In intramuscular block, the local in anesthetic is directly injected into the quadratus lumborum muscle. The quadratus lumborum block can be placed in lateral or the prone position of the patient by using a low frequency convex probe. In lateral position, the probe is usually placed vertically between the iliac crest and the lower costal margin at the mid axillary line. To identify the external oblique, internal oblique, and transverse abdominis muscles of the abdomen. And then it moves posteriorly until the abdominal muscles start tapering off and converts into the thick aponeurosis. The quadratus lumborum muscle lies just deep to this aponeurosis between the sauce major and the erector spiny muscles. Local anesthetic can be injected anterior, lateral, or posterior to the quadratus lumborum muscle. Here we can see that source major muscle lies just anterior to the quadratus lumborum muscle, while the erector spiny muscle lies just posterior to the quadratus lumborum muscle. But uh, this can easily be recognized by the Shamrock sign or the thumbs up sign, where the Quadratus lumborum muscle lies at the tip of the thumb while the fingers points towards the source major muscle. The erector spiny muscle lies just behind the thumb. The quadratus lumborum block can also be performed in prone position by keeping the probe in transverse or paramedian orientation. The probe is placed approximately 3 cm lateral to the spinous process and the blunt tip of transverse process is identified. The quadratus lumborum muscle lies just below the erector spiny muscle and the drug can be injected just beneath the quadratus lumborum muscle. These blocks are quite safer, even though they can lead to local anesthetic toxicity, puncture of the intra-abdominal structures, hypotension, retroperitoneal hematoma, lower extremity weakness, pneumothorax, and intrapleural injection. Though interfacial plane blocks have gained popularity in the last decade due to the ease of application, low risk of complications, the analgesic efficacy and the reduction of opioid consumption. These blocks cannot generate surgical anesthesia. However, they can reduce the requirement of general anesthetic intraoperatively and can be used as the main component of multimodal analgesia postoperatively. The blocks are usually safer, but the injection site must be watched for the infection, blood hematoma, and the organ injuries. It is better to use saline hydrolocation to keep the track of the needle tip. The block should always be performed under sterile conditions and the standard monitoring. These are my few references. Thank you.